guys, I'm going to do another quick setup um, and an overview of uh, one of my invertebrates in the reptile shed. I've got loads and loads of product projects on the go. Um, we've got our, our Herman's tortoise Daisy. She'll be coming out of hibernation soon, so I'm halfway through making her a run. I've still got the enclosure behind this one that I'm finishing. And I've got um, some other cool stuff in the pipeline as well. But this is just a quick one. My blue leg centipede, um, Ephastigmus trigger. Oh, what is it? Trigonopodus um, is well overdue. A uh, a re a refit in her Exoterra. So I've cleaned the Exoterra out and I've done a quick and dirty um, Gorilla Glue background on there. Um, it's been a background um, process that we've done for years and years and years. So I didn't film the, the process, but basically I score the glass up a bit with some rough sandpaper. You can use a silicon base as well, but I score the glass up with silica, um, with a sandpaper. And then I, um, I put the Gorilla Glue on quite thick, give it a little spray with water to start the expanding process. And then I dump on a load of, well, a mix of eco earth, sphagnum moss, and just just that kind of thing to give that natural kind of earthy look. And then I, every now and again, I pop back and I press on bits just to give it a little bit of shape, which is what I've done now. You see, I've I've uh, created some kind of vertical lines and bulges and stuff like that. Anyway, let's get to the uh, substrate layer. Substrate for this girl is uh, it's missing one vital component um but it should be okay because I've, I've got some in the old in the old uh, substrate and stuff down there so we have got uh cocoa fiber which is going to be the bulk bulk of it I've got some play sand i've got orchid bark and i've got some irish moss peat so i'm going to mix all this up together we also have some leaf litter and somewhere We've got some sphagnum moss. So let's mix all that together and chuck it in the enclosure. So this this species of centipede can be found in tropical climates, uh, also going ranging all the way down to sort of drier climates as well in Africa. So I'm going for a tropical mix. That's how I've kept her for years, years and years. Um, and uh, she's done really well. She's, she's laid eggs um, and looked after her eggs. Um, they didn't hatch because she wasn't bred, but uh, um, she wasn't, you know, paired up with a with a male or anything like that. But um, yeah, I'm assuming she's a a happy little centipede. So the sand's going to help it bind a little bit because she is going to burrow, um, and she's going to dive down and, and make her own little ecosystem. Uh, the orchid bark's helping for the aeration of the soil, and then our, our cocoa fibre and our, uh, our Irish moss peat are kind of like our bulk uh, soil kind of stuff. So, what else have we got in here? We've got some sphagnum moss I'm going to chuck in. I buy my sphagnum moss uh, in a block, dried, and I, so I can store it, and then I... Uh, I like break break a block in half, or you know, make a whole block up when I need it, which is a bit easier than buying it loose in the bags. So we've got some of that, and we're going to chuck in a little bit of leaf litter. But the majority of our leaf litter is going to be sitting on the top as well, which will help her feel a little bit more safe and secure before she starts to make burrows and knows exactly where she's going. Help our soil deteriorate into our soil and start the whole bioactive process and gives some of our insects something to munch on as well. Okay, next up decorations and planting. So, what I'm going to do is I want this area here to be uh, to have a plant. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the area up just slightly. And create this kind of pocket for the plant to be in. The plant I'm using is a philodendron scandens. I'm 
The reason I chose this, it's kind of a an alternative to using uh, Pofos Devil's Ivy. Uh, it grows equally as well. Uh, it tolerates a bit of low light. I'm not going to light this really heavily, um, so it tolerates a bit of low light. Um, and it, once it gets going, it should cover. It will climb the background. It will climb all the decoration, things like that. So my idea for this enclosure is to kind of make a bit of a a root coming a bit of a root um, ball from a tree. So I've cut these pieces of branches from a from an old root ball that I use in the reptile room. Okay, so I want to put a little bit more soil in. Building up that back corner has uh, taken away some of the soil at the front that I wanted to use. And then what I'm also going to do is add a peperomia to the mix as well. Put that here. And to finish it up. Add some big leaves. Give it a bit of a, oh, give it a bit of a spray down. No. Okay, so I'm quite happy with how that's looking. We're now just going to add our springtail colony. Going to tap some of them in. Oh my god, that's more than enough. <laughs> that gives me something to do, wouldn't it? And last thing to do is add some wood louse. This is a mixture of orange and grey. I prefer it to just be tropical grey. The orange don't really do too much for the uh, for the actual ecosystem of the tank, but they breed like wildfire here in the uh, in the shed, so I can't grab tropical greys without getting a few oranges in there as well. They are pretty cool though. There we go. Now, let's go and get a centipede. Okay, so here is my Tanzania blue-legged centipede. As you can see, uh, she's got a bit of length to her. Adults can get to about 15 centimeters. This is a girl. Um, so uh, I've actually seen her lay eggs uh, and cradle them. Um, but because they weren't fertile after a couple of weeks, uh, she discarded them. Um, so, uh, as the name suggests, they can be found in Tanzania. Uh, also, the Congo and Sudan in Africa. So, these guys um, come from a fairly tropical, uh, warm climate. And the trick with these guys is to keep them moist, keep them humid, but allow them to find their own... Uh, to find their own ecosystems inside the enclosure. So uh, 
so that's what we that's why we've set up a nice kind of natural feeling enclosure uh, I've added a water dish it's quite important as well to get these guys although they will drink water from being sprayed and they'll get water from their prey as well um, it's also important to offer them uh, to offer them uh, water if they need to get to it um, I'll keep her in this in my reptile shed it get it gets to sort of mid 20s so I don't I don't need to heat her anything like that should be more active during the night um, you won't tend to see them too much during the day you won't tend to see them too much anyway um, that is the nature of, uh, of these centipedes they stay fairly hidden um, but they come out every now and again um, I offer her food once a week maybe once every two weeks depending on the prey size um, she'll take down anything from like a, a large uh, dubia cockroach, um, locusts, crickets, she can handle a few crickets, a couple of locusts or just a big feed with a big cockroach, um, even even something like a, a sub-adult um, hissing cockroach, uh, they, they are hardcore, they'll take down anything, uh, so uh, here she is. she's being really well behaved actually, I was expecting her to be flying up and down the stick this is being really well behaved. This isn't this isn't very natural for her. So I'm going to go ahead and put her in the uh, in a, in her tank, and uh, we'll let her uh, explore. Now, now you now you're on the move. Here we go. Yeah. 